Welcome to the presentation where we look at injuries to bones, focusing on fractures and stress fractures. What we will cover, we're going to start with identifying the different types of fractures that can happen. And it's important for us to know the different types when we're talking to our clients that have had a fracture or a stress fracture. We're going to discuss the signs, symptoms and the causes of stress fractures, which is what you may see quite commonly in your clinic. And then lastly, identify those sports massage strategies for clients that have experienced a fracture or a stress fracture. And here are the main types of fracture. So the first one is a closed or a simple fracture where there is no broken skin. An opened or compound fracture is where the bone penetrates the skin. So there's a bony protrusion through the skin. A complicated fracture where there was a lot more complex tissue damage. This may be from a car accident or a traffic accident, as an example. And finally, a comminuted fracture, which is where the bone breaks into fragments more than two, so more complex fracture. And this is a really good example or visual example of the different types of fractures. You can see the slightly different versions um, depending on what has happened. And um, there's a few more in this image as well. So you've got a torus or a buckle within the tissue there. Uh, number five is displaced, where there's a fracture and the bones are displaced against each other. You have a, a seven, which is a hairline fracture. Um, and number two is a green stick. So they're sometimes quite similar. Uh, number eight is a single, which is more like the simple fracture. So you can see there are lots of different ways that a bone injury can occur. And knowing and understanding this can help support us when we're treating our clients with sports massage after a fracture. There are three main causes of fractures. The first is a direct or an indirect trauma to that particular area. A repetitive strain, which may lead to a fracture or a stress fracture. And then some other pathological causes, such as osteoporosis. And when we're working with our clients that have experienced a fracture, we will get this information from them within their subjective and their objective assessments. A stress fracture is often known also as a fatigue fracture. And it's where there is lots and lots of repetition loading the skeleton over a period of time. And your client may come in with a muscle injury, but it may actually be a stress factor that has occurred. And if you suspect that, then always get that referral um, for a diagnosis before you start working with your client. Stress fractures can be caused by loading the skeleton at high frequency, so lots of repetition of heavy load, overloading the tissues too much, so a sudden increase of training where the body can't really adapt too much. This type of injury is quite common in running injuries, especially someone that's quite sedentary that then goes into marathon training where they have overloaded their body too much at a too quick a rate for the body to adapt. Some of the signs and symptoms that the client may experience is inflammation, tenderness in a really specific area, and pain during activity, and sometimes once the activity has ended. Some of these signs and symptoms are really similar for some of the tendon injuries and the muscle injuries, especially the structural muscle injuries as well. So it's important that you do a thorough injury assessment of your client before treating to know what you're working with. And if you aren't sure or you suspect a stress fracture, then it is really important that you get that clinical diagnosis and refer them uh, to their GP or to A&E. Some sports massage guidelines for fractures. So it's so important to take that really good client history to find out all of the factors involved. If it's a recently suspected fracture, you want to send them instantly for a diagnosis. You want to get that diagnosis firm before you start any treatment whatsoever. Some considerations is about what's happened and why it may have happened, especially if you have a client with a suspected stress fracture. What is their training schedule like? What was their exercise history before they started training? and then discount any red flags or any contraindications. If you're seeing a client that has already been diagnosed for a fracture, then assess their posture and range of movement. Check for signs of inflammation um, and any of the local or systemic contraindications. And if you still aren't sure, then you can always refer back to the relevant health professional if that is required. So the goal for fractures is about helping support the client through the healing process and their rehabilitation. If they have been in a cast, in a boot, using any walking aid, so we can support them through that journey. As we progress into the different types of techniques for 
fractures. You may notice that actually massage around the fracture site is a contraindication for quite a long period of time. During those phases of healing, so right up until the remodeling phase, we want to be avoiding adding pressure to that area to help those tissues heal naturally and the bone heal naturally. So if we go back to the um, stages of healing for bone, it's quite a lengthy process and we don't want to be interfering with that. So it is a local contraindication for quite a long time, which you may notice as we progress through the rest of this online learning. Some of the benefits of sports massage for fractures is it helps reduce pain, calming the nervous system down if they have been experiencing a lot of pain. Massage can potentially help create changes to the connective tissue around the area to help the healing process. And it can also support any compensation. As mentioned before, if your client has been walking with an aid, has been in a boot or a cast as an example. So if your client has already been diagnosed with a fracture, this is what you can do to help in terms of sports massage. So let's start by focusing on the bleeding and the inflammation or acute phase of tissue healing. So as mentioned a lot, always refer for diagnosis, x-ray and treatment in this phase. So it's really important you get that correct diagnosis before you do any treatment when it comes to fractures. And in this phase, avoid any massage on the fracture site. Techniques can be used on other areas to help with any compensations, but the fracture site itself is a local contraindication. And then we can look at massage in the proliferation or the repair phase of tissue healing for a fracture. Focus on calming that nervous system. So while you're avoiding the fracture site, you can use those techniques to help calm the body down, help that healing process and reduce pain overall. Always consider all those compensations that may happen from immobilization. So think about the opposite limb and what's happening during that time and any walking aids as an example. And then finally, massaging in the remodeling or maturation phase of the tissue healing for fractures. During this phase and after any immobilization, you may want to consider some of the wound healing and scar massage techniques around that fracture site. And that's a really good time for them to begin. So it's about gentle pressure, focusing on wound or scar healing type techniques. And if there have been some surgeries that have occurred due to the fracture or there has been any pins or plates within the bone to help the healing process, treat them as a bony prominence and avoid that area as well and focus on those wound healing and scar massage techniques. You want to ensure that the scar area has completely healed before you apply any massage techniques to that particular area. And this is where you may need to work alongside a physiotherapist or the consultant that has provided the surgery for your client uh, to know when massage is uh, indicated during this healing phase. Also continue to consider any compensations from immobilizations because this can have a knock-on effect. If they have been uh, immobilized for quite a long period of time, it can have a huge effect globally on the body rather than just in that local fracture site. And that's why you can do some really amazing work to help that healing process until you can begin some scar or wound work on the fracture site itself. Other modalities that may help in that proliferation and remodeling phase may be instrument assisted massage at that same time as the client begins to start moving and become mobilized again. That could be a technique that can be used quite effectively. And when it comes to exercise for fractures, you want to recommend a detailed home care plan for optimal loading. Now this may need to be worked with a physiotherapist or a strength and conditioning coach to create that detailed plan to get that adequate loading for the bones. Guarding may occur after the fracture has healed, so there may be some increased pain that's present. So we want to be able to help movement to improve that and that's where the massage followed by the movement can make a big difference. And as with all types of injuries, communication with your clients is really important. And it's important to use simple and clear language to help them understand about that tissue healing phases and the education surrounding that. Always focus on the outcomes rather than those times because everybody heals differently. And it's important to discuss that and mention that to your clients so you know what to expect. And a final point just on Wolf's Law, which we've discussed in some of the early online learnings. 
And this is where the bones have the ability to adapt and increase bone density um, and osteoblast production based on mechanical stress and the direction of load of mechanical stress. And there was some research, one about a tennis player, so their humerus was uh, had increased bone density and there was more osteoblast production than in their non-racket hands. So it just demonstrates that exercise and creating adequate mechanical stress is a really important part of the quality of the repaired tissue. So getting your clients moving is so, so, so important. And if you don't feel comfortable providing this for your client, then always get that support from a physio, personal trainer or coach. And then here are the further reading and resources from this online learning.